couple of months ago I put up on the uh, the Fall King of Predators page a poll saying what band would you like us to review the entire discography of and um, I gave four options because there were four bands I was listening to at the time it was Radiohead King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard mm. Kings of Leon and Arctic Monkeys Yeah, I thought Arctic Monkeys were going to win that by a while I, but I they, were, too. they were the worst performing band yeah. and this was before the new album came out so oh, I was wow. like Arctic Monkeys are definitely so it's not even like recency bias of the hate on the new album you know I love the new album oh, oh. we'll get into that we'll get into time. that eventually that'll someday. be a different episode <laughs> also, oh, yeah but Radiohead won by yeah. a King Gizzard also drew with them so I had yeah. to bring it to another poll that'll be a different episode we'll altogether. do King Gizzard. that's like 30 albums so yeah. we'll do that like maybe 10 at a time or something. Yeah, that'd be a we'll totally see. different uh, way of looking at it. But yeah. Like but we, we won't do King Gizzard second because no. it's like this is my pick. Yeah. Or do, those four were my picks. Yeah. So for the next one, it'll be your pick. Sure. So throughout this podcast, think of a four people that you might want I to I could do probably think of a couple of artists. Start for your review yeah, of. exactly. So and for at like the end, the, I'll ask you. Yeah, so for the next episode, I'll think of a couple artists that we can uh, come up with and then we'll put it out to the people and that we'll see what the general consensus is of those particular artists who they'd like us to do a full discovery uh, yeah. review of right now it is radiohead and you know so we're going to get started on that and the way we're going to do is we're going to start from the first album work our way up to the last album and we have notes on each album alan has them written down because he's a uh, very much into this band a lot more than i would be radiohead he's a fan. passionate radiohead fan he's I'm been listening so to him for many years <laughs> i've only really started listening to him back in college or whatever so i've only a couple of years I've listened to their discography and only really for this review I went and listened to every single album fully true from start to finish as opposed to picking and choosing different ones like you know I heard Kid A before like start to finish whatever but I never really listened to like uh, Pablo Honey fully true or whatever so I don't think I ever did either yeah it's kind of hard once you hit creep you're kind of like that's it but um, <laughs> I'm kidding yeah, there's some kind of. there's some okay songs it ends well it, it does. ends well I yes. think like that album kind of plays out like a it picks up a little it's kind of weirdly shaped in terms of quality. Yeah. It's kind of like, imagine a sandwich mm-hmm. where where the bread <laughs> yeah. is like made by fucking Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and then the meat is just like cardboard. It's not even it's like meat. Just, you, you can't even eat it. You can kind of chew on it, but you, you're you not going to get any nutrients. No flavor. It's no flavor. Like, how, <laughs> how bad would it be to eat cardboard? Not that bad, I'm sure. Really? I don't you know. Just don't be able to handle it? I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Only cardboard, please. Okay, I won't. But like, I, I think like the first, maybe the first two, yeah, the first two songs on that album, yeah, are amazing. Yeah, now that's including Creep. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, in general, Creep is a decent song. It's a good song. Mm. It's a popular song. It's more like if you're really into their deep discography and all their other deep cuts, you'll generally not listen to Creep as much because it's yeah. more of a formulaic pop song, right? And then they have other stuff that completely off the wall stuff. Yeah. that you can kind of sink your teeth into a little bit more you know so we'll talk about pablo honey first and then we'll kind of work our way up so my personal opinion on pablo honey is i think it's an okay album with some really high highs and some really low lows like really, really low lows. lows really really low lows. it like took me out like i didn't think the songs were terrible i'm just trying to go from a perspective of start to finish album listening i usually sit down with the headphones on kind of just try get through it and see if anything takes me out while I'm listening to it. Mm. And Pablo Honey, it kept me at points like uh, You and Creep, the first two albums. I was really into it. I was enjoying it because I'd only heard Creep really as a single without context of the rest of the album. So You into Creep was a fun little transition. I thought You was a great song. Yeah. I think it's actually, I never really listened to Pablo Honey, so I Mm. didn't know You. Yeah. But I knew Creep. I think that was probably it. Maybe anyone can play guitar. Yeah. That song as well. Exactly. But um, you, I remember when we first decided to do this, I listened to it, and that was the first song I heard. And I went, yeah. how have I never listened to this song? This is a fucking brilliant song. It's yeah. one of my favorite radio songs yeah. now. It's kind of like and a sleeper hit. Yeah. The, the, the song Creep overshadows it so much that mm. you might have loved the song, but as soon as Creep comes on, you're kind of like, you forgot what just played there. And you, most of the time when you come back to the album, then maybe a couple of years later, you're generally listening to Creep because it's, like, it's one of the biggest rock songs ever. So a lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it too. It's a little bit like, uh, uh, like Wonder, Wonderwall in that kind of way. Yeah. Everybody kind of loves it at some point in their life and then you kind of hate it. It is the song that got you into Radiohead. Exactly, you know. Unless maybe one of those songs off of the Benz or something. Yeah. But did you notice that you has like a weird time signature? It does. As but like I, I think it's six, fun. Eight, and then yeah. the fourth bar is in five. So there eight. are, like from the first song on their first album, you already know these guys are ambitious and they want to do. Like yeah. kind of, 
somewhat experimental stuff at the time now they probably didn't know yet exactly where that was going to go yeah, and then they obviously listening to that and noticing that time signature made yeah go, all right they actually knew what they were doing they, back then. they were trying but probably trying to get into the yeah, mainstream they want to inject themselves into the radio a bit first so you mm. know who they are and then they can show you what they really have to offer so i appreciate that about the band but obviously i'm sure back in 1993 if that was the only album you heard by them you would just think they're just an pretty decent alternative rock band like yeah. nothing too crazy special they have a big pop hit but nothing too crazy special it's a good album 7.5 out of 10 and a great day on a great day as an alternative rock album yeah as a radio yeah as a radio that album compared 75%. to the rest of their songs yeah as like a it's radio pretty it's pretty good mm. but as a but i feel like in context of the rest of the albums because a lot of their music is great quality music mm. you have to really compare it to what they go on to do like when you listen to pablo honey yeah and imagine you didn't know Radiohead, mm -hmm. and you listen to Paolo Honey and In Rainbows, thinking it was two different bands. Yeah. Then you, you listen could to Paolo Honey, and someone said, that's the same band that made In Rainbows. You could easily think it's the two different bands, apart easy. from maybe the vocalist. Yeah. But that's about it. That's it. Like, um, I give it, so you give it 75%. I give it like 75%. But like, I was being generous, so I do like the album. Yeah, I was trying to be generous yeah. as well. I don't want to be too, like... I don't want to be a hater, negative. dude. Like, Although one of the notes I have, there was one song on the album that I didn't like. It's yeah, Thinking well, About You. Yeah, I and thought... And the note I wrote beside it is, Shut Up, Emo. <laughs> 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 yeah, that one's a little... It's a little indulgent, I think. It's a little... Uh, they could have put that near the end of the album, you know, when people kind of forgot already. The kind of how you came... Kind of how you wore off. So play a little more of a... Yeah, just background music. Background music. But yeah, so I think... Uh, Pablo Hoodie is a fun album at moments, mm. a little indulgent in some, but when it's when it's going well, it keeps you entertained and it has some like huge sounds. So uh, overall, it's a decent album. We just whipped out the calculator, there, yeah, and that's our combined score of Pablo Honey gives it seventy one percent. Seventy one percent. Okay. Yeah. So that's all right. It's not bad. So we're kind of in a similar like that's vein. A decent marking. And yeah. I will like I'm gonna I expected to give it spoilers. a trash expe I expected to give a trash dude because I like yeah, all I the other ones more. I hate a lot more. Like the last Yeah. Okay, there's like the last it was the four last songs yeah. on the album. There's three that are brilliant. I oh yeah. Prove yourself I can't and blow out. Mm -hmm. I love those three songs. Yeah. That kind of that's what redeemed it. Like the middle yeah. part is just kind of okay. No. My least favourite song in there is probably Vegetable. Vegetable. Um, yeah, I wrote beside Vegetable. I liked this song until the chorus came in. <laughs> I can't remember how the song goes. I, yeah. just, I didn't like the chorus. I just personally thought it was like n not that interesting after all the other songs that came before it. And thinking about you as well, only a couple of songs before that. I was getting a little bored at that point. Mm. But then, like I said, Prove Yourself came on and I can't. And those two songs together, I was like, okay, it's bringing me back. Lurgy kind of plateaued a little bit. And then Blow It was a great ender. So... 71% for Pablo Honey. Um, I was totally expecting to come in, like like I said, from a full album listening experience to just kind of totally trash it compared to the rest of the albums, such as like OK Computer, Kid A, or In Rainbows, when it comes to start to finish quality music without taking it out of it or whatever. So I was pleasantly surprised when I was finished with that and I gave it like 75% or something like that. Yeah. I was like, OK, I actually enjoyed it more. 75% is decent. Like, but, you know. the, but that other percent that didn't get i really didn't enjoy it yeah the, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i really didn't enjoy some parts yeah i won't go back to some of those songs ever again probably no but you but and other stuff like uh blowout and stuff i will but that's that's me on pablo honey i think we can yeah. move on pablo honey, yeah yeah we can move on so to the both, next both pleasantly surprised pleasantly surprised percent. definitely pleasantly surprised yeah. now here's one that I was very excited about. Benz. I really like the Benz. It's, what a great album. It's a great album. Because, like I was saying before we started recording, or in previous clips that you may not have heard or so, but like I was saying to Alan that the Benz is one of my favorite Radiohead albums because there's a lot of um, great content. It's not just great riffage and like some big, loud alternative rock still. Like the last album where it was a bit more uh, cut and dry of what you're getting. I thought the Benz, you could hear they're really, really trying to push away from that pop rock kind of um, aesthetic and really push more into an alternative underground sort of respected as opposed to wildly successfully popular. Yeah, the song Just, mm. the guitar, this is like when I started learning guitar. Yeah. So like all the guitar parts in Just, I just got obsessed with that song. Yeah. So like that, that song alone made me get the album. And I was like, in love with it yeah like, and I, for a long time I didn't like anything after 
the Benz. Oh yeah. I only liked the Benz. I didn't like Pablo Honey at the time. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought OK Computer was okay, but everything after that I was like, no, nah, I don't want to listen. Not to really this. interested. Maybe in Rainbows. Yeah. But after that I was just like, no. Nah. Yeah. But like for example, uh, you know the opening song Planet Telix, really really fun song. Yeah. Really great. The riffs. drum beat and yeah. the bass line. Yeah. I think that's what made me love the album the, the drum bass beat, on it super spacey as well it's mm. a totally different soundscape than Pablo Honey you could tell they're really trying to get away they still want to be rock at this point maybe mm. because they're still popular and if they totally went left field after the first album people might have disliked the second album because even if it's good quality music like it's totally different from what they know if you listen if you go if you listen to the bands and then go back and listen to Pablo Honey you'll mm. notice that there's a lot less like interest in the bass yeah. In Pablo Honey. Yeah. Whereas Colin Green with the basses comes out a lot more yes. in the bands. He shows and himself more. He stays on yeah. for the rest of the discography. Kind of doesn't just show up, but like he's good. you know he's there. Yeah. Like after Pablo Honey, it's kinda like he took like a more of a leading role when it comes to yeah. the soundscape as opposed Definitely. to just playing the root notes of the guitar chords or whatever, yeah. you know. He's a very underrated member of the band as yeah. well. People don't realise if you put another bassist into Radiohead, they would sound mm so different oh yeah they w- it might not mm. work no and as well it's like uh, oh I can't wait till we get to In Rainbows because that's when I think he yeah. really shined the best yeah oh easy that's, that was his best work we're not on that yet though we're still on we the have bands, a while to go still got a while to go but like I was saying about the bands there's a g- lot of great songs here that you could take out like as singles like for example My Iron Lung what a banger Um, Just what a great song Fake Plastic Trees mm. really fun song High and Dry the Benz, obviously, and Planet Telix. All those songs there, like, for example, Planet Telix, The Benz, High and Dry, Fake Plastic Trees. That four-song run is amazing. Like, those songs are great. Now, Bones and Nice Dream was my favourite, but I was still enjoying the kind of uh, atmosphere that was being created. And then Just, My Iron Lung, Bulletproof, I Wish I Was. Those three songs, I'm like, this is mm. really keeping me here. So I never really felt like I was getting taken out of this album at all. Yeah, I wrote like the, the first up until Sulk. Yeah, I loved the whole album, and that's not too bad. That's the second last song. Yes, yeah, the <laughs> last song. I, and there was no real reason for me not to like Sulk. There yeah. was just something about it I just didn't really care yeah. about. You Maybe know? on a different day when you listen to it, it might grab you. It's just that day. No, I said you were you're not mad about Nice Dream, are you? Not mad about it, but I don't I, hate it. I made a specific note saying very underrated song. Beside yeah, it. I never knew. You probably it before. you probably knew that like someone was gonna be like. Eh. Nobody ever talks about Nice Dream. So you're saying no nice Dream's only okay, but I'm urging I people think, to go listen to I it. I think it's a good <laughs> song. Maybe I'll go listen to it again in context with the rest of the album again. You know, because An- another one that I think is really underrated and that people should listen to is yeah. Bulletproof. I wish I was. Yeah. which you mentioned. Yes, yeah, well. so I really like that song. Mm. Like I said about the bands, like they definitely are trying to show that we're more than just an alternative rock band. Even the album cover, like a weird looking moaning. What is that? Like, it looks like a resuscitation uh, dummy <laughs> that you practice yeah. CPR on, but it's made out of CGI or something. Mm. 1995 CGI, so it has a little Real bit of 90s. creepy kind of uncanny valley to it. Yeah. Or he's busting a nut. I don't even know. <laughs> 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 but like, that could be the context they're trying to give you. Like, what is this I'm about to hear? Um, But like I said, I really like this album a lot. It's gonna get a high score mm. from me because the only times that I came like came out of the album with not even in a bad way was on Bones and Nice Dream, and they didn't even take me out that much. Yeah. It was more just like because the songs before that were so high quality. Yeah, Bones is one is the only song apart from Sulk that like docked at any points. Yeah, yeah. I said it was okay. Yeah. So I said I used to love the song when I was younger, and now I'm listening to it, and it's just. It's, it's all right. Like, yeah, that's nothing special about it. Nothing crazy. But at the time, I loved it, so I gave it a good mark. And still, I didn't say it was bad. Yeah. Mm. So um, I'd say my favorite song in the whole album, "Street Spirit Fade Out." Yeah, love that song. Mm-hmm. I used to think it was on OK Computer. It sounds like something off. Oh of yeah, OK no, computer. definitely is like a calling to what they're kind of gonna do very soon. But ninety-two percent would be what I'd be giving this album, especially for an alternative rock album that came in 95 when all the other ones kind of sounded in a similar vein this mm. one stood out for me yeah this really stood out as well definitely. yeah they could have yeah Radiohead were in a situation where after Pablo Honey they could have kept doing the same thing yeah and they kind of did but they just yeah. did it better and they could have stayed on the Pablo Honey thing do Creep number two do Creepwell and then they would have made so <laughs> much money and they would be so famous in the 90s but then they would have lost so much relevance later you know and they would have never came around to 
the album that we'll do next. But mm-hmm. I want to hear your opinion a bit more on the bands and give me your final score. And then, well, like as I think we talked a bit about the bands, it's a good album, very good album. You thought there was two songs on it that were only okay. Yeah. I thought there was one song on it that was only okay. Yeah. And then one song that I didn't like at Which all. Which one was that now? Um, it was Sulk. Oh yeah, Sulk. Yeah. Right, right. I just didn't have an interest in that song just at all. So I gave it eighty-seven yeah. percent. Yeah. Still. That's still really that's good. That's eighty-seven though. and ninety mm-hmm. ninety-two or something like that. That's kind of like. We'll round it at about 90% then. Like yeah, if you want. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, so we'll round it to 90%. You can really clearly see we're going to go on to OK Computer next. Yeah. And that's like the kind of the last of their grunge. Yeah. E, yeah alternative rock kind of sound. Because I don't even think that one's grunge, but we'll get into no, that. No, you couldn't call it grunge, yeah, I don't no. think. It was just but in that era of when grunge was big. That's it, like 90s yeah. rock. Kind and of people were still style. on creep even a few years later, like, you know. But you can really see the progression in Radiohead yeah. through these three albums. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. I feel like uh, OK Computer is where they wanted to um, start out almost. Like the Benz, like I was saying, is a great album. But if we're going to go into OK Computer, that seems like this is what we wanted to do. But if we did this first, nobody would have ever listened to us probably. probably because yeah. it was a kind of a more low-key album in certain aspects. Like It was their first real concept album yeah. as well. Where it's like there's a running team through the it whole It didn't team. feel like a bunch of kids just making a bunch of rock songs. It felt yeah. like we need to sit down and what's this going to be about? Mm. The Benz didn't really have that. It just had a bunch of really great individual tracks. Yeah. And Pablo Honey kind of similar in that Pablo way. Pablo Honey is kind of similar to a mixtape. Yeah, and this it? way, this is when they finally sat down and was like, no, this song has to be about this. And it's at the end of the album, it kind of all comes together. Mm. And what I really like about it, since it came out in 97 and... Now, listen to it now, the, the mix and the soundscape, is not it's not going to stand out to you crazy uh, much right now from all the years gone by. But in 97, everything else was so overblown and so like rough and metal was still big, like, you know, yeah. groove metal and stuff like that. And Nirvana was still on the high of Nirvana. The grunge like was so dirty. Yeah, this one came down with grunge at this yeah, point. Yeah, this like. one kind of came in and refined it a bit again. You have some great riffs and stuff like that. And it drew some heavy moments like on Airbag, you know. Airbag has a great... It's a great way of opening yeah. them. That's one thing I forgot to mention is nearly every album is opened perfectly, yeah. I think. I think they have great closers too. Yeah, but, um, great closers they, too. Their, their openings always kind of give you exactly kind of what you're in for. Mm. If the if you like the opener, you're most likely going to like the rest of the album, basically, yeah. is what I find from them. I have a feeling that... You know, Johnny Greenwood is um, a movie composer now. Oh, yeah. He oh, scores wow. films. That's brilliant. And... He's the guitarist of Radiohead now. Yeah. And I feel like this is probably when... I don't know when he started doing it, but I have a feeling that this is probably around that time. Yeah. Because you can hear there's a lot more string sections mm-hmm. and there's a lot more just strange, unusual soundscapes so the that seed you're not was used to at this time. Music. Yeah, it's like the mm-hmm. seed was planted at this time for exactly, yeah. bigger soundscapes. And I feel like, like this album, they're doing that a lot. On, yeah, you could hear a bit of like... Um, I think like violins and like yeah. orchestral sounds on the bends, but very sparingly... And very low, mm. you know, under the mix. But OK Computer is like, there's a lot going on in this album in yeah. terms of soundscapes. In terms of soundscapes, is yeah. like, But like I said, like, I just enjoy how it sounds because it was stood out so different from all the other like, albums in 97 and the rest of the kind of rock kind of soundscapes of the 90s. Even their two previous albums, it totally kind of gets away from the big buzz and loud stuff and more like um, spaced out yeah. soundscapes exactly. that sound huge but they're not like so in your face that it's harsh to listen to and each thing you can kind of like point out and it has its own place in the mix so I really like it and for me it's probably going to be one of the higher rated albums apart from uh, a later one I'm not going to give spoilers but this one there wasn't really any songs on it that made me think it was mid or like took me out of the uh, experience I feel like every song in context of the full album is very good. Apart from when I first listened to the album, Airbag, Paranoid Android, and Subterranean Homesick Alien, those three songs together are perfect three songs together. Then I thought Exit Music for for a film kind of took me out of that soundscape. I didn't hate the song. I just thought, oh, I was in this uh, soundscape for the last three songs, and it kind of just totally took it away from me. Alan had a great... um, example of how they do that in a lot of their albums that I started to notice a bit later in their discography but apart from that pretty much every song I enjoyed Exit Music I do enjoy on its own I just thought in the context of first listen it took me out but then when I finished the album I, I see why they did it it was it was fun for me 
Yeah, the only like this album is so close. It's to so you, good. To getting a hundred percent. Yeah, it's so me. good. So the only good. thing that stops it is Subterranean Homesick Alien. You don't like that one. I don't or not like it. Yeah. Like if if I was driving my car and came on the yeah, playlist, yeah. I wouldn't turn it off. I would right. listen to it like and I would enjoy it. But compared to every other song on the oh, album, yeah. like I think every other song on the album is perfect. Yeah. Even fit or happier because mm-hmm. of where it's put. Like it's yeah. not a song. No. It's just a like a robot talking. Yeah, it's kind of like it's a just little plays so well. I think it's like an intermission. Yeah, and it, yeah, basically, yeah. it's very good. But um, yeah, so turning homesick alien, although I don't mind the song, it mm. it it's not to be compared to the rest of the album. Yeah. I think. Like I think this album for me, pretty much every song would score highly. Like, mm. like I said, none of them are mid. It's only at one point I was listening to it, I got taken out, but. I'm sure if I went back and listened to it again, knowing what's to come there, that won't bother you, bother me as much because as soon as that's done, it puts you in another mind space again and it gives you a different energy to hold on to and then it takes it away again and gives you something else. So the album has a lot to offer and each song has so much to it. There's no songs here that I feel like are fillers apart from the little intermission song, but that doesn't really matter. Every song by itself, if you put it on shuffle, it's going to be an enjoyable mm. experience. So... Yeah, you, this you one like, really miss, like this, I think this one's gonna get like almost a hundred dude right? like, almost it sounds like you're arguing 100 i think i am gonna give it 100 percent. it's probably my most really? enjoyed album by them yeah and i know that's not even an unpopular opinion i know a lot of people would hold like, the same sometimes sentiment like but sometimes everyone comes to the same conclusion for a reason maybe like, it's you know, just it that a, good like i feel like a bit of an ass for only giving you one like, <laughs> i give it 96 percent. yeah but i'm not gonna count the intermission song Oh no, I, I, I counted the intermission song. I love where Fit or, fit or Happy yeah. is. I love where it is. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. Great. But I think, yeah, there's nothing really on this album that makes me go, I don't like any part of it. I think um, at the time, if they had to stop making music right after that, they could have been solidified as one of the greatest 90s bands ever. Just from that album alone. Because it kind of uh, ushered in a new age again of rock not being so like brash and kind of more refined. And I feel like the music you heard in the early 2000s from other rock bands derived straight from this album. Definitely. You know? Yeah, I was doing... Um, this is a surprising kind of connection now, mm. but I was doing a top 10 on Keen yeah. lately. You know, oh, Keen. Keen. Yeah, I do like Keen. They're kind yeah. of like a pop band. They have yeah. no guitars or anything. The first album sounds so like OK Computer. Oh, yeah. Just minus the soundscapes exactly. and the guitars and stuff. But and it's like you can tell. Right? Yeah. If, we, if there was no OK Computer, there wouldn't be... A keen, yeah, and it's common knowledge that if there wasn't an OK computer, there wouldn't be a uh, Coldplay. Exactly. You know? Yeah, a lot of bands that came out of England. So even just that album alone, r- regardless of Radiohead or the rest of their discography, that album alone has spearheaded so many other amazing artists that we like today that you wouldn't even know was inspired by that album. So yeah, for me, I'm going to give it a hundred just simply for the fact it's so iconic. The singles are amazing, the soundscapes are great, the riffs are awesome, the the space is huge that it creates. And I just think as a concept album, it, it really gets you thinking a lot because a lot of the songs have such like, some of the lyrics are kind of, um, how would you say, like riddle-ish. Like you wouldn't mm. know exactly what they're talking about in some of the songs. You that, that's the key to good song. Yeah, you have to kind of pick out some of it yeah. and you can kind of interpret it yourself. So by the end of it, if you didn't like it, maybe you need to look at yourself, bro. <laughs> maybe you need to look at yourself. <laughs> maybe. For anyone who like is listening to this and doesn't listen to Radiohead, I mm. want to go back. I actually, we have a marking system where like we go by color. So like yeah. a, a song we like is blue, mm. a song that we think is okay is white, and a song that we don't like is red. But I also was putting in purple mm-hmm. picks as well, just like songs that like if someone's not listening to Radiohead and they want to get into them, what songs I would show them. Yeah. So after the last three albums, my purple picks were off of Pablo Honey was You. Yeah. Off of the Benz was High and Dry. And off of OK Computer, it was let down. I think they're like good songs to start people yeah. off. I think you definitely wouldn't show them Kid A first or nothing like that. No. <laughs> Although my favorite song off of OK Computer is probably Climbing Up the Walls. And that song, mm, yes, the distorted vocals. Yeah, love that song. Oh yeah, I just love the soundscapes and everything they're doing on mm. them. Yeah, one of my favorite ones by them. The reason and I did that there with the Purple Pigs is because. It's good to get all those three albums together yeah. because after OK Computer is when shit hit the fan. That's when it really <laughs> became uh, a different kind of band. It became like a different band. I reckon... The first three are kind of in their own vein. Oh, hold on. I forgot to um, 
tell you what the American was. You oh, gave yes. that 100%. Yeah, they I gave, gave it 96%. That's yeah. 98%. That's that's very good. Very good. So out of three albums, none has gone lower than 70%. No. And that's 71%. And I don't suspect it will, maybe, if it were. I don't think so. I can't remember what I don't think it would, actually. Yeah, I, I pretty much enjoyed it. There's a lot, a lot good of good to come from Radiohead yeah, I enjoyed after it. Kid A. But so Kid far a. we have Pablo Honey is 71%. The Benz yeah. is 90%. And OK Computer is 98%. That's pretty good. I have a feeling Kid A is going to do a lot as well. Kid A. This is going to be fun. Before we go into Kid A, do you want to take a break? Yeah, let's do a little break. Cool. Yeah, so we had some technical difficulties. Uh, we did record the first half and the second half. We got the bread of the, the sandwich, bread, yeah. and we're about to record the meat, lettuce, or cucumbers, or, or whatever your mayonnaise. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's how we got onto synthetic be, meat yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. We won't digress again. We won't we digress had a long again. conversation. We had a long time. conversation about... Uh, Synthetic meat, uh, Lego, Lego Blacks, Kanye, uh, Kanye, Lil Sims. Lil Sims. Go listen to Lil Sims. If yeah, you right. So we're gonna get back to the uh, the the meat of the sandwich of the podcast. Yeah. This is probably the most important album we're gonna talk about. This as well. is the most important. If you're a Radiohead fan, of course. Yeah. And now I know we just came off of a, you know, OK Computer. Yeah. And that one, if Kid A was never a factor, OK Computer, everybody would say is the best Radiohead album, without question. Mm. Or in rainbows. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about if those albums didn't come out. Oh, in rainbows as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like say if um, if they stopped at OK Computer, they could have just had a great legacy from that. Yeah. Because that album is amazing. Definitely. Yeah. It's almost. They're perfect. on top of the world at that point. Yeah. It's pretty much like the perfect '90s alternative rock album. Yeah. It sums it up. I think they were like they made a good decision by changing shit yeah. up then because like they, I don't think they could have done anything better. No. In that genre. They kind of peaked with what they were doing with that style at the time if they did it again it would just be trying to rehash what they just did yeah no they went completely like left field what's that famous video on YouTube it's like the greatest left turn in music history yeah. <laughs> yeah. just cause Radiohead did it but it is good it, it is. is good um, but let's get Kid into a, Kid yeah. A cause uh, it's a good one it's a great people one people yeah. are waiting for this one yeah, yeah. Um, it's my favourite album probably of all time I'd say of all time yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely for Radiohead as well. Definitely, definitely for Radiohead. Yeah, and would that be like even close to any other albums when it comes to Radiohead stuff, or compared sorry? to Radiohead? Um, no, like mm. there's a lot of I think, apart from the first one, I like all of their albums. Yeah. So, yeah, but none compares to that. Yeah. None compares to Kid A. Kid A, like I listen uh, to Kid A a lot more. Yeah, than I remember you said album. before, like whenever you put on Kid A, if the first song starts. That's basically the next 45 minutes of your life. Uh, yeah. You know what you're doing there. You can't do anything else. Yeah, you know, like I'm the sitting the there. Yeah. It's yeah. basically a one long song. You can't just turn it off. Once yeah. you start it, you kind of have to go through the whole thing because it is so conceptual. And in my opinion, it probably is my favorite Radiohead album apart from maybe like really? In Rainbows oh, or yeah. we'll get to all that anyway later. Because we're still in the middle, like we have the bread, like I said, we're at the meat right now. We're we're cooking the meat we're right now. We're cooking. Let them cook, okay. And this this one this one is the meat. <laughs> this album. Yeah. So yeah. I just have the album uh, track list up here as well because I don't want to mess it up because I know the hardcore fans would be pissed if I said like Creep <laughs> is on this album or something. <laughs> you know, it was really good up until the National Anthem, and then the Creep came on, and I was like, "What is this? It's not the same." I'd love to see one of those um, YouTube videos where it's like. Radiohead creep, but it's on Kid A. Yeah, <laughs> it's just edited to make it sound like it's yeah. Like, they just have like a bunch of uh, like moaning and <laughs> uh, like weird sound effects. The, oh man, the sound effects on this album. Yeah, they're, they're actually elite. Yeah, they're really. They're good. what like, makes it. Mm. Yeah, like the tonalities on the album is fucking. Kind of makes it creepy as well sometimes. Like some of the sounds are very strange because mm. you can tell it's a vocal, but the way it's manipulated, it's kind of like has a weird sound to it that it kind of. Pl- plays across both like headphones kind of runs mm. around your head and th- sometimes it just sounds like it wouldn't necessarily be a musical thing that works really well because by itself yeah. it probably sound very strange yeah they really you know? um like for 2000 as well yeah i think that's when this album was released like that was yeah. a lot to be given people like and that was especially when you're like music. coming off of the high that you're yeah. just on like you're like the kings of rock music in the 90s mm-hmm. and then like you you waited three years to make this album yeah everyone's excited for rock music and then they're hearing this mad shit in the yeah yeah like there's like um there's ambient songs on yeah. this as well i would have loved to have been there at the time when this came out just mm. to see because i can tell now obviously it's been what 20 something years now mm. since it came out and everybody 
agrees that it's an amazing album, one of the best ever made. But I would have loved to see the discourse at the time of like the super hardcore, just coming out of the 90s grunge era. Yeah. You know, you got your Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all this stuff, and you're listening to Radiohead, all the alternative rock. The grunge like, fans were definitely like really holding on to bands like Radiohead yeah. as well. So they're probably like, okay, this next one here, Kid A, that sounds cool. What's this going to be all about? You put it on, and it's just a little synth, and it's like, <laughs> what a, like, what what a great the fuck album. Is this? Start. What the fuck is this? And then if you're a real guy like me, you're a real <laughs> guy, you actually listen to the whole album before you judge it, if you're a real guy like me. I don't know, in 2000, would you have? Fuck no, I wouldn't have. Yeah. I, was trying, like, I was listening to Gorillaz and stuff back then, you know, this would have been. No, but say you're like. 23 yeah. in 2000 and you're a Radiohead fan that comes out what are you doing I'd probably I'd be very confused at first yeah. but I think I'd be happy as well because like you've said pretty much every album up to that point it's kind of all a similar style but they do progress mm. and add new stuff to it this one was the biggest like change from what they had been doing it's kind of the yeah. new chapter but I have had conversations with people before they're like oh I'm a big huge music fan I'm like okay do you like Kid A oh I haven't listened to it and it's like not to be an elitist but <laughs> if you say you're a big music fan and you haven't at least listened to Kid A once mm. I don't want to like if, if it comes to like experimental rock music or whatever I don't really want to have that conversation yet because it's like if you ask me Kid A is the foundation for the last 20 years of experimental yeah. indie rock or alternative rock yeah, you can hear a lot of modern artists yeah. and you can hear the similarities to Kid A. Exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know. I always say, if you're going to have that conversation about experimental rock or whatever, at least listen to Kid A first because that's where it started, if you ask me, especially for the last two decades. Mm. That's where it started because it was the new uh, millennium or whatever. It's just year 2000, so things were different. And then they dropped one of the most creative, weird sound and albums ever. Like with such cool sounds and soundscapes to it they even released a playstation game based around they did, this didn't they? Yeah, yeah where you can like walk around that. the museum and they're playing the different songs and you can walk around and there's like visualizers which is really cool now that's mad because i know you're not a big uh, gamer but hey radiohead dropped a game i'm about to be a gamer <laughs> <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever like listen to a song and while you're listening to it you're like I wish I wrote this. Yeah. If I could go back and stop someone from making a song yeah. so I could take credit for it. I want to steal this song. Kid A. Yeah. The song, the second song on the album. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I love it. Like. Is that your favorite song off the album? Um, Yeah, definitely. It's hard to beat that song. Yeah, it's good. Like, one. I had to be in the right mind space to go, okay, I'm going to go sit down and listen to this and not do anything else. You really need patience with yeah, it. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm just going to turn off all the, t the TV and stuff, put my phone away, just put my headphones on and just listen to this album. And it took me a few years to do that. I was listening to all the other stuff in Rainbows, OK Computer, because they're not as conceptual. Mm. You can kind of like pick out your favorite songs here and there. So I was like, finally, I'll sit down and listen to it. And yeah, it definitely changed my whole opinion on the entire band. Yeah, I remember when um, I first started getting into Radiohead, I only really listened to the first three albums. Yeah. And then um, an album that they released after Kid A called Hail to the Thief. Yeah. yeah. They're the only albums I would listen to. Mm -hmm. The rest of them I didn't like. And I remember um, I told Mam because I was like 12 this time she was going yeah. to town I said if you're getting anything will you go in and get a Radiohead CD yeah. and I didn't specify what I wanted yeah, so your man behind the counter one. was like well if he likes Radiohead he's going to like Kid A so yeah. she gave me Kid A and I put it on I was like what the fuck is this shit mom yeah. where's the fucking guitars your balls dropped that day yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, I where's fucking... the fucking guitars this guy's playing piano and shit <laughs> <laughs> this is not rock and roll yeah this but is no, rock like, <laughs> now I'm absolutely obsessed with this album now there's like a yeah. few criticisms I would have of it I'd but like, like it. I'm okay like if I was making the album with them I would yeah. have had these things happen yeah. in the album but I'm okay with them not being there as well yeah but um yeah the song How to Disappear Completely mm -hmm. and then the following one Three Fingers yeah they should have like blended them together they should have right. like they should have sounded like one song together yeah but instead they just stop and stop then Three and Fingers start starts song. you know yeah they could have added like an extra 10 seconds or something of some sort of transitional type of sound yeah because I do agree that since the two songs are kind of different but if you did just have that at the end it would feel like one big long journey yeah even if it's a totally different song after it just yeah I kind of yeah, get I, that I remember when I like went back to it like I only kind of really got back into Radiohead maybe this year yeah 
after like a while from because from, from doing the top tens, I didn't yeah. really get to do a Radiohead. Mm-hmm. I didn't listen to Radiohead since I did the Radiohead yeah. top ten. Plus, which you was the first for one. years. You kind of like yeah. knew the discography inside and out at that stage. You know? Yeah, but when I went back to it, I was kind of like I remember I couldn't remember if they did that or not. And I was listening to How to Disappear completely, yeah. and I was like hoping because I knew Three Fingers was next. I was like I was yeah. like hoping that they would do that. Yeah, you know? but when I say that, the next song then. Um, um, the next song then is optimistic mm-hmm. and then it, like it ends with this big jam session and it blends really well into the next song in limbo yeah so if i'm going to give out and bitch and shit my pants about how to disappear completely yeah. and your <laughs> fingers not working they kind of made up for it then yeah, they, like they, they, pretty much straight away yeah, pr- yeah. like the, literally the next song literally the next song yeah. and then it goes into one of my favorite which is idiotech i fucking love that song man just the, the drums in it yeah, is crazy that's a great one. whenever radiohead just decide to go wild on the drums like it just gets me you know yeah. you got airbag from OK Computer you got Idiotech Jigsaw falling into place as well on you it. got 15 yeah. step like anytime they have some weird drum patterns he's a great drummer yeah he's so underrated mm-hmm. yeah that guy from Radiohead you know the drummer <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad for this you know, Philip Selloway yeah 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 but like I know I heard someone on YouTube lately like a, a, a respected music critic calling him a boring drummer and I was like, what? Go fuck yourself. There's never been a time when I'm listening to his drum parts going, this is fucking boring. Mm. I'm actually like, he always isn't right in the pocket yeah. with the bassist. That if they took out all the rest of the instruments, I feel like the drums and bass are always the most solid out of the whole mm. band. Now, don't get me started on the guitar work. I love the guitar work. But I start to love the guitar work a bit more later in their discography. Okay, well, I think we talked a, a good bit about this album. Now, I know we didn't get... F- so into each individual song i know lots of people like those kind of breakdowns but i think we find that kind of boring sometimes like and we've this been song, talking for a while this, about song, this album this song yeah. this song generally when we're listening to albums our kind of process is we put on the album from start to finish and depending on how much enjoyment we got out of it now we might be able to pick out individual songs we like the most but a lot of the time when we're judging albums it's literally an album experience from start to finish did I enjoy the whole thing was there lulls here and there and did any parts kind of take me out and for this album I enjoyed absolutely everything now like you said there would be one critique here and there maybe a fade away here and there but apart from that I think everything in this album is precise and they meant to put it there Yeah. and there was no kind of like let's be experimental just for the sake of experimenting they had a concept before they even start recording this I'm sure and then it was just a matter of actually making it uh, come to fruition and I'm I really love this album I'm very impressed yeah. with it and it's probably my favourite one oh, it's hard to say but it probably is my favourite one like if really? we're talking about full al- album experience start to finish of a concept album as well it's probably my favourite one yeah. not for singles but just for an album yeah no maybe. I don't yeah. think there's any singles on no the that's what I mean like, like if it's yeah. just an album piece then I fucking love this one more than any other ones if there's like single stuff it'll be a different album but we'll get to that later you know yeah. So uh, what do you think? Uh, well, uh, like I already, I already uh, said it's my favorite album of all time. So like people times. who are listening are going to already guess that. Sounds like ninety percent. Yeah. Well, they know what percentage <laughs> I'm going to give it. It's going to be like an easy one hundred percent. Yeah, it is. I know I had the criticisms. I have another criticism as well. Yeah. But I get to that on the next album because mm-hmm. it kind of ties into that. Yeah. But I still don't think they're good enough criticisms to it wouldn't dock take any at any points. points. Like yeah. you know, it's it's a hundred percent for me. Like probably just nitpicks if anything. Yeah. Yeah. You Plus, you know the album so dick. well at this stage now, inside and out. It's kind of like, yeah, you have a more They're personal g- yeah. connection to True, it. True, yeah. So, you know, I can understand. It's like with me and uh, other bands that I'm like, was really into, and especially when I was like discovering music for the first time. Like, I'm sure if I put on Master of Puppets, I could pick out stuff in here and there that I don't think works or whatever. Even though that sounds egotistical to say, I just know the album's so in and out, and it's, I grew up with it. It's like maybe if this was a little different, it'd be this and it'd be better or whatever. Same with any album. The yeah. more you listen to it, you're going to pick out more and more yeah, things exactly. every single time. But I think... Um, That's another thing I find with Kid A is I actually find new, new things stuff. that I like yeah. every single time mm-hmm. I listen to it. That's why it's interesting and I didn't want to listen to it straight away because I knew this is going to be a, an experience kind of album and if I kind of put it on as background music, I'm not going to appreciate it. And then if I go and listen to it properly and the next time, I'll kind of remember the song or whatever and I didn't want to ruin it for me, like spoilers for an album. So if this is like your first time ever listening to it and you ha- don't have that connection to it, which was me, I didn't really have this connection to this album when I was growing up, whatever. Um, and it, and I got the same kind of experience that you got and you've been listening to this forever. So I think that's just a testament to how good the album is and how 
cr- at their, a cr- such a creative peak they were at the time, which is really impressive because it's not like the peak dropped off so much they actually peaked again in other albums and peaked again. And it's like, yeah, I think at this oh. point they've been making albums for ten years yeah. now. Did Pablo Honey come out in nineteen ninety one? Ninety one or ninety three? I think. Was it? Like that's almost a decade. Yeah, I know we mentioned it pretty a good few minutes ago, but I can't remember exactly right now because we're talking about so many yeah. different things. But yeah, I'm going to give this album 100%. Oh my God. Because I don't need to say anything else about it. If you know this album already and you're listening because you're a Radiohead fan, you already know. I was kind of concerned about Radiohead being the first top 10 we did for yeah. that exact reason because I knew there would be at least one album that would get 100%. Yeah, yeah. Because like, I'm just that confident in the two albums. Yeah. And I don't and want to necessarily. Kid be, A is one of those. I don't want to be necessarily like, too positive on every artist we do because there's going to be artists we do, and I'm like, okay, this album, we got to talk about this stuff. I'm going to be bullying people. Like. I'm going to be bullying you specifically for your opinions. Me? I'm or the, the whoever's crowd. listening. Oh, yeah. I'm talking to you right now. Just don't bully ears. Woody. I'm very sensitive. Don't bully Woody. They're the best band of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Kid A gets a Kid A. plus. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you thinking of that? Oh, so it just came to me there. It was a good one. That was brilliant. All yeah. right. So, yeah, it's 100%. So, let's 100%. Uh, yeah, 100%. There's nothing on it that I don't like. Even the ambient kind of songs. It's just. I really like the ambient songs. Especially now. Yeah. 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 When I was a kid, like listening to Master of Puppets, like I said, like that would, have, would not have flew at the time. Yeah. Where's the guitars, man? Yeah. It's, now I, I'm a little bit more mature these days mm. when it comes to my music listening experience and stuff. But. Oh, yeah. My purple pick as well is um, Kid A. Kid A. Yeah. Perfect. And my purple pick would probably be uh, the National uh, national Anthem. Yeah. yeah I, I fucked it up a few times saying it. but and It's a toughie. It's, it's a toughie. toughie yeah. But I love the bass on that song. Yeah. It just gets me every time. All right. Let's move on to our next pick of yeah. the day. So the following year, they released an album called Peaky Blinders soundtrack. <laughs> See, yeah. I'm confused because this next album confuses me. Okay. Amnesiac. So. I'm I'm being led to believe that you weren't the greatest fan of this album. Listen, I like the album, but if we're talking purely out of Radiohead's discography and we have to pick out the best and the worst and stuff, this one's not up there for me. Yeah. Because, um, we had just literally came off of the Ben's OK Computer and Kid A. And that's like a ridiculously good tree album run there. Mm. And then we go into essentially what's the Kid A B-sides. Yeah. And I know that's what it is. And I'm not going to hate on it. I'm, I don't want to be as harsh because I know it's not like they spent another three years to make a different album. It's a year after a three-year break to make one of the best albums ever. It's for the fans, okay? But mm. I wasn't a fan back then. I was only two years old when this came out. <laughs> so it wasn't talking to me. It's like, you, you, yeah. Sardines, no, I, sardines in a crushed tin box. I was two years old. I wasn't eating sardines. I was eating tuna. <laughs> like, okay. All right. <laughs> me on the other hand. Yeah, what, what do you think? At, at three, I love sardines. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was eating them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Even when you were two years old. Yeah, I was. I didn't have tea. I was just sucking on those sardines. This guy is sucking on sardines over here. <laughs> That's how you know he's a Radiohead fan for real. <laughs> no, I really like this album. Yeah. Tell me about it. For the standard with which I like Radiohead albums, I don't like this Radiohead album okay. that much. Yeah, but yeah. I still really like this album. If this was you know? just a regular ass album, it would be the You'd best be album. I oh, yeah. fucking love it. Yeah. Apart from that one song, Hunting Bears. Don't get me started on that song. Why, like. It's Red Dead Redemption yeah, yeah. soundtrack. Like, what's that about? <laughs> no. The songs that do stand out are very good, but the songs I don't like they just don't. Uh, You're not going to remember them. It's just you know? like I said, we came off a three album run of almost three perfect albums, basically. The Benz is not perfect to me, but it's very close. Mm. OK Computer and Kid A are basically perfect. Now, that's already impressive right there. So when we got onto this, and it's. Uh, it just wasn't as conceptual. The songs didn't hit as hard for me. Nothing really pulled me in as much and made me go, okay, I need to come back and listen to this again fully true like I would have OK Computer or Kid A. And I don't hate the album. Like you said, if this wasn't Radiohead's album, I'd probably really like it. But it's just they had set such a high standard to this yeah. point then. That when yeah, I heard you have it, that comparability. Yeah, now, exactly. You know? So when I first heard it, then I was like, okay, it's not as great as The Last Tree. But that doesn't necessarily mean I can't enjoy it. Mm. but I just happen to not enjoy it as much as the other albums so far yeah I'm kind of looking at the notes I had on each song and yeah. like generally they were positive but there was a lot of like but you know yeah yeah like you know for 
the G chord should have been a C. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like the first two. Yeah. But I'm aware that packed like sardines in a crushed tin back box is just weird noises. Yeah. And I do like it. I but like I weird noises. I like weird noises, yeah. But Pyramid Song's great. Pyramid Song is amazing. It's a great album. Or like a great that song. One. But um Pulk Pull Revolving Doors, I was like, it's okay. It's too early in the album for that carry yes. on and with the spoken word vocals I'm not mad about that because like you know Tom York is one of the best singers ever yeah. you know in rock music so, so let so him sing <laughs> let him sing don't be talking like yeah, that, yeah. That, leave that to O, o- Emperor yeah, you know? yeah or an interview after like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the fourth song You and Who's Army yeah I said why is the song not famous like yeah exactly. I love that one it's really like, good so there are some songs on this album that just hit perfectly yeah and there is a kind of different sound to amnesia mm-hmm. or to kid a yeah but it's like you can tell it's like the same band and they're holding on to a little bit of S- the kid a they're sound. still in the same mind space because mm-hmm. they spent three years making kid a and this comes out a year later it's so hard to kind of shake that creative energy especially when kid a was one of their most critically successful ones and yeah. then a year later to come out with something else it's gonna probably still have some of the dna from that yeah definitely. and it is like there's the, one song on it that's actually you know, the it's also on Kid A, you know, Morning yeah. Bell. Mm-hmm. That's like an amnesiac version, but on Kid A, it's in 5-4, and yeah. there's like a cool drum beat and all this, and there's just nicer sounds. Yeah. But um, I feel like if you're hearing the amnesiac version for the first time, you might like it. But after you hear the Kid A version, it's like, it's only okay then, yeah. you know? Yeah, the kind of 5-4 beat kind of gives it that bit of character, Yeah. that it's not just a straight beat. Mm. And the thing is, sometimes all you have to do is, like... Not to be pretentious, you could just if you switch up the time signature in certain songs, it does change the whole energy, oh, and it can time. actually move the song faster. I automatically like a song if it's not in four four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four four is great, but it's so overdone. Yeah, like it can get boring. Like Radiohead are one of those bands that can do odd time signatures without being considered like math rock, all weird yeah. and trying to be experimental just to be egotistical. Mm. But they just use it to create different soundscapes, you know. They're very good at using weird time signatures, like really weird time signatures, yeah. like five four and seven four and yeah, all yeah. this. Like, and you mightn't even notice, mm-hmm. you know. You ca- sometimes yeah. you don't catch on to the beat until like the third or fourth time around, and you're like, "Oh, I hear what they're doing now with the rhythm." Yeah, you know. So, like I said about this album, they do have some really good high points. Mm-hmm. Like, and the stuff that was high points, they probably could have took one or two of these songs off of this and put it onto Kid A. But I think Hit A is kind of perfect how long it is and the songs they chose for that is amazing. So perhaps since this is an 11 song album, I feel like they could have took out like three, four or five songs and just made it like a mixtape or short LP a year later after one of the most critically successful concept albums of all time. Yeah. It could have been received a bit better after like, look, here's eight songs of the best material as mm. opposed to putting in hunting bears. God damn. Oh, <laughs> like I like on my notes I said fuck off and go play Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. Like, I was so annoyed when I was listening through this album and that came on. Yeah. It made such a huge difference to the rating I actually gave it. Because yeah. like just one song that docked him two points for like the rating. Kind of does because up to that point, up. like dollars and cents, really good song. Yeah, I actually have written mm-hmm. here. Remember earlier when I, we were talking about Kid A, I said there was one criticism I had for yeah. Kid A and Amnesia combined. Yeah. It was that I actually think dollars and cents would have worked better on Kid A yeah. instead of motion picture soundtrack mm-hmm. that would have worked better on Amnesiac oh I agree mm-hmm. I think motion picture soundtrack would have been brilliant on Amnesiac because it just has that kind of vibe I feel like they were mm-hmm. trying to get like motion picture soundtrack to me is probably what they were like oh we got to do another album in this kind of vein mm-hmm. let's work from there yeah I you think. can really sound you can really hear the similarity of the two yeah. albums in dollars and cents I feel like animation. dollars and cents was probably something that like by the time they got to the cutting room floor and they had to cut certain things down to make it like a 40 something minute album that was probably the one that they had to cut but if any other song on Amnesiac wasn't or on Kid A wasn't there they could have put in dollars and cents that's one of my favorite ones off that one mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I need to share that now. My purple pick for this album was I Might Be Wrong. Yeah. Although my favourite song on the album is Life in a Glass House. Yeah. That's some good picks now. Like I said, they're good, but it's just not my favourite album. Like I said, yeah. it just kind of like, it deflated me a little bit just mm. because the highs that we had reached up to this point were so high. Not being a hater, if this is your favourite Radiohead album, I don't blame you, but I'm also like, did you not hear the last three albums? Did you not hear Hunting Bears? Did you not hear Hunting Bears <laughs> on repeat <laughs> remix 2023 version? <laughs> <laughs> Marshmallow remix. Oh you know? god! <laughs> you know, but uh, look, it's a good album. 
I still gave it a fairly good rating. I gave it 82%. Yeah, you know? I, you know, b- before we had some technical difficulties, I was a little bit more harsh on the album. Mm-hmm. Maybe so, because yeah, I was became... a bit more emotional about it. <laughs> but now I'm actually thinking about it in a more mature mind space. And it's a decent album. But yeah. for me, it's probably the my least favorite album by them. Even Apart Pablo from Honey. Pablo Honey. Really? But I give Pablo Honey a little bit of credit because it's their first album. And they're still figuring it out. Yeah. yeah. This one, they had just put out three almost perfect albums in a row before this one. So for me, it's just a bit like, it's kind of just the, the peak fell off a little bit. Yeah. But it comes back up again when we move on to our next particular album that we want to talk about. We did our calculations there. We cut it out because you don't want to hear us math. Mathematical. Yeah. I know on, we just on, talked about weird time signatures, forms, yeah. but that's cool math. Yeah. That's like cool <laughs> math games. That's cool math. I like that, Matt. I like that, Matt. But, but the don't talk to me about long division. You want to hear a calculator and talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we got a calculator. So, Caelan, 67%. Me, 82%. Yeah. You put that together, that's 75%. Listen, 67% is not even terrible. It's just, mm. like I said, they set such a high standard that yeah. it's actually kind of a compliment. It's 75%. I feel like on future Discog reviews, yeah. if that's what we're going to call these, but yeah. like... um. I feel like you could do someone else and 75% might be actually one of their best. That might be their best, right? You know? Yeah. Because we're kind of dickheads. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. pretty mean. We just like this kind of music, you know? Yeah. We've always been into experimental stuff and rock music. So this is kind of right in our bag. Yeah. Once we get into a couple other artists that maybe we're not too familiar with and we have to go through their, uh, both of us have to go through their discography for the first time blind mm-hmm. with no idea who we're talking about, we could be like, this is terrible. Yeah. And to someone else, it's like, this is the best album of the 1987 or whatever. <laughs> we're like, Psh, I didn't even know it came out in 1987, you know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. So, um, Amnesiac, it's decent. Yeah. 75, does it? Okay. Not my favorite, but yeah. not terrible. It's not awful. Did it high? Um, yeah, it it topped Pablo Honey anyway. So, I'm, Pablo I'm okay with that. That's as long as right. it did better than Pablo Honey. Yeah, because if not, then we're definitely going to get lynched by the fans, you know? Really had fans. They have a very um, they're very passionate community. They're very passionate. They're and either uh, violent or like really skinny and like <laughs> they just can't fight. Why, why are you looking at me when you say that? Why well, I didn't look at you? No, I didn't <laughs> say nothing. I didn't mention that they wear woody hats and have hoodies and. Uh, oh yeah, um, buy my band's merch, uh, please. No. Woody hats now available on the woody <laughs> side. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah. Enough, um, enough advertising. Enough next amnesia, album because I'm gonna fall asleep if we keep talking. <laughs> <a bit. laughs> I really like the next album. Yeah, the next album I Pale feel like it teeth. picks up again, and from mm. here they actually pick up and just keep going up for the next few albums. So that's why the last one got a bit of a lower rating because, in my opinion, first four really good, apart from Pablo Honey, but it's the first album. Give him, give him a break. So the tree from that, almost perfect. We get one that's kind of a lull. Hail to the teeth picks up again, and everything from there onwards, I feel like, just consistently goes back up to the ninety percent, to hundred percent mm. again, almost. So, we'll get into that now. So yeah, hail to the teeth. Let me. I want to hear your opinion about this one because I feel like you said to me this is like one of the first ones you really listened to or bought the record yeah. for and play through and you know really got into the. the yeah, songs. it was like they did. They did two albums where it's like really experimental weird music that mightn't have worked yeah and then they went from there back to like it, it kind of sounds like a band jamming yeah again and um even more like a band jam than any of the other albums mm-hmm. even the early albums yeah and um i feel like a lot of people that could have been a, a risky thing to do yeah because like if you're after getting acclaimed for your last two albums and then suddenly you're like all right back to what we used to do yeah could have been a recipe for disaster yeah now, I don't think it is. No. I really like this album. I think it's and really like, good. Yeah. It's and really high quality. What's funny is, like, it was one of the first albums I got into, but I only listened to, like, you know, the main songs on yeah, the yeah. album. And when I was re-listening to it, I realized I loved this album way more than I thought yeah. it did. Songs you might not have fully listened to. Like, you're, you're waiting to get to song six. So yeah. song seven, I'll kind of do whatever. But then you actually listen to it fully through and go, oh, wow, I actually really enjoy pretty much most of the music off mm. this album. I need to look at the discard f- or the the track list for that one what's uh, funny about this album actually is um, <laughs> so both Dempsey and Keen from Woody went into Luca mm. you know the record shop yeah and they went in there separate from each other and both got that exact same album oh nice but they're only getting into Radiohead now yeah so yeah. it's nice to see like it's one of the Radiohead this is a kind of a tangent Radiohead are a cool band like that if you're just getting into music they're w- such a fun band to listen to like I said I put off Kid A forever because I knew 
this is an experience kind of album. I don't want to go in there the first time just walking down the street, headphones in, getting distracted by stuff, and not really listening to it. So it's really fun for someone just getting into the band because they have so many great albums. I feel like the energy is way up compared to the yeah, last two. Yeah, definitely. It's long the last two were These would be great more, live. Yeah, the last two were a little bit more drawn out because they're exper- experienced ones and experimental. This one is a bit more, let's let's kick them right in the ass again, you know, and get some uh, some energy going. So I really like this album a lot. And we can go into individual songs if you want because as an overall album, like... I've said this a lot. We like to listen from start to finish to these albums for overall experience. But this album has great individual tracks as well. I feel like out of a lot of their albums, this one is the most... uh, the least conceptualized album. Mm. Each song is on there and it stands by itself. It doesn't necessarily have to flow into the next one because the last theme was... If the last theme is about fish, like they do a lot, because yeah. they have a couple songs to do with fish, you know, you do got they? weird fishes, Great, that, crushed, f- crushed sardines and a oh, crushed yeah. fish. T- <laughs> t- <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that was terrible. Um, Staying in. But this one is uh, a bit more, each song, if you put it on shuffle, you could play, you just play this whole album through shuffle and it'll still sound good. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, even just listening to it, like, I'm looking at the ratings I gave it now and I'm like, I have them marked by colour and stuff. Yeah. And there's 14 songs on this album. Mm-hmm. The first 12 all got good marks. Yeah. They all got a little blue tick. Do you have any negative remarks about this album? Nah, I mean, a little bit. Nah, it's just a little bit. <laughs> the second last song, the 13th song, Scatterbrain. Yeah. It's like, eh. It's all right. It's all right. Like, you know, I'm not... Like, I, if it came on in the car when I'm driving, I might skip it. Yeah. I also might not. You know? Yeah. So it kind it, of, it's, meh. Nah. It could have ended the album at... The twelfth song and Easily. it would have been a lot Mix better. Mixomatosis. I'm but always, like one, yeah. I'm always an advocate for, if you can make the album better by taking a song off of it. Mm. I'd much rather you take something away, than add something to it, and then by the last three songs you're just waiting for it to end. Instead yeah, yeah. of it ends and you go, oh, I want more. And it's like that's much better than, all right, let's let's wrap it up now. You yeah. Because by the time you get to the last song, you're kind of already ready to turn it off. If you're as opposed to, to it like, ends you yeah know? Like, true songs could be 10 minutes if you're listening Absolutely. through 10 minutes of just like I don't want to be listening to this yeah. it could ruin your whole experience of the, yeah. the previous 10 songs the last you know? thing you'll remember is oh I really was getting bored there yeah, really so you might bored. not listen to the start of it again A Wolf at the Door A Wolf at the, the last, Door last song on the album I hate it it's <laughs> one of the few Radiohead songs I just can't stand I don't hate it as much as I hate Hunting Bears do you always but, skip it? Um, or would it's, you it's alright okay it's alright yeah. and then the chorus comes in and then I skip it. Okay. <laughs> I hate the chorus. Yeah, the chorus is actually me. decent. Like. Yeah, the chorus yeah. of The Wolf at the Door, I'm not crazy on. Because, yeah. like like you said, oh, this album would have been almost perfect for me if they just stopped the last song at Mixomatosis. Yeah. And the last two songs, I don't hate them, but I really <laughs> don't love them either. They're kind of, when I get to the last two songs on this album, I'm ready to turn off the album. Yeah. Like I said, I'd rather the album end than me getting ready to turn it off. Absolutely. So that's my opinion. Apart from that, it doesn't really distract too many points away from my overall score of it. Because I feel like up to that point, like, you know, two plus two equals five. Back drifts, you know, we suck young blood. Back drifts. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember that? Yeah. We were in a band here. Yeah, yeah. And I tried to name it Back Drifters. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't allowed. <laughs> you weren't allowed. Because everyone hated Radiohead. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, let's go. Uh, do you want to go into individual songs or do you want to rate this one? Because. I think this is a very fun album. Yeah, I have like I have a lot of notes between every song. Yeah, but I don't mind. I could also just be like, "Here, lads, listen to it." Yeah, it's good. You know, it's, it's it's every song. I have a lot of good things to say about. I really like how they use a lot of time signatures. In this. Yeah, like and a well, lot of like, weird time signatures. There's something I forgot to mention though. Considering this came out in 2003, alternative rock music in 2003, this is definitely something that would have been like a high point. Because I feel like early 2000s rock, you know yourself. There's a lot of hit and miss when it comes to early 2000s rock. Yeah. You know, you had some good bands. For example, uh, uh, Franz Ferdinand. Uh, Lock Party. Uh, uh, Art and Monkeys. Was, yeah. Okay. You have Maccabees. Day, you have Green Day. The and Maccabees. Stuff like that. Radiohead. Oh, oh, wow. We're going to get into that eventually. We'll get into that eventually. Do you hate Green Day? I don't hate them. I just like <laughs> really, 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 really don't like them. Yeah, that's fair. Not as people. 
No, they're for sure they're nice guys. Probably nice guys. <laughs> but yeah, this album for me, I really like it. I think it's a very fun one. Like I said, yeah. it's like their peak. Well, it's like they're rising again. I don't think they peaked on this one. No. But I think um, from Pablo Honey all the way up to Kid A was like straight up. And then Amnesia kind of flattened out. And then this one brought it up again. And it, up until their last album that they released, I think it just kept up and up and up and up. Mm. In my personal opinion, so I'd give this a fairly high rating. I don't know in mm. percentage wise, but I give it a high rating. So I give it eighty nine percent. Yeah. My purple pick is There There, mm. and that's probably my favorite song on the album as well. Either that or Where I End and You Begin. I yeah. really like that one too. Yeah. But yeah, I give it eighty nine percent. I think my favorite song on this album probably Backdrifts, just cause. Yeah, great tune. It's such a fun song. Mm. It's a fun song. Two plus two equals five is always a good opener yeah. as well. That's a great. The opener. first few songs are elite only parts that made me lose any points was the last couple songs where I feel like if they just took off one or two songs it could have been a lot of a tighter track list that's mm. all apart from that I think it's a really good album and the creative peak that I felt like kind of plateaued a bit on Amnesiac started to rise again so I gave it like an 87% overall really good album yeah yeah I pretty much the same like criticisms and positive things to say about it the album I gave it a little better of a score I gave it 89% mm-hmm. which you know we did our calculations yeah, there yeah. and we just we, that means that we got it got an 80% or no I'm lying it got 88% 88% which, which is like, a very positive score yeah no I would like if if I had to guess what yeah. I thought of each of these albums like they're actually kind of living up to what yeah. I would um, what you would have guessed they would yeah. have gotten yeah. especially being a long time fan you kind of you'd understand the the general uh, feelings towards each album I'm sure yeah. you know the Radiohead fans love OK Computer. They love Kid A. But I'm going to throw a spanner in the works okay. on a later album. Yeah. And everyone's going to hate me for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I know which one you're talking about. But yeah. we'll get to that when we we'll get, get to, to that the when next we get there. piece of bread. So we're going to take a break <laughs> now and then we're going to talk about it. Well, okay. we already did it because we had the technical difficulties. Yeah, technical difficulties. So we're going to stop this one and then you're going to hear us speaking from like a month ago but with the magic of uh editing yeah you won't even know it'd be like it's the same day so, yeah if you want to visualize us just for the next few minutes um we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna have shorter videos radiohead are one of those bands where they have kind of a they have a divisive fan base because a lot of them are like everything that we've ever released is great mm. and then you have people who are real people like me who say <laughs> so many albums are I but some of them are the best I've ever heard so mm. guys yeah, if you're mad I'm on your side here I like these guys they're a real weird band in the sense that every now and then they're like make something that's just a masterpiece like masterpiece. and there's like no one that will argue it like there's yeah. very few people that are going to argue that Kid A isn't a masterpiece and that OK Computer isn't no. and like the next album in rainbows it's like people nearly everyone loves this album i've never met someone who didn't yeah even people who aren't into music love this album absolutely and you then know? they go sue an eight-year-old for playing a c chord what <laughs> i'm sorry i was talking i was in i'm sorry i was just thinking about radiohead for a second uh all right so but speaking of that it's, it's usually their label is suing people isn't it yeah it's usually I, label. So. I don't think it's tom york going around saying hey hey eight-year-old i'm the creep over here <laughs> You, oh God! You can't be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be creeping over here. This I'm is my creeping, territory. all right. <laughs> but yeah, that's actually you stole my whole flow. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a good time to bring up their label because yeah. they actually this is the first album that they released away from their label. It wasn't like it was solo, wasn't it? Like they didn't yeah. actually sell it. It was like an online thing. You can donate yeah, money they, to buy it if you want. I think they kind of like started Bandcamp basically. Yeah, like they, they basically said they you put can pay us website. a dollar or you can pay us a hundred if you yeah. want. Like you can take it for free. Yeah. You can give us a thousand euro. Don't give a fuck. And unsurprisingly, yeah. it's their most successful when it comes to like downloads and stuff. Maybe they didn't make the most money off it, but it's definitely the most popular. I think they did. I read somewhere. I don't know if I'm pulling this out of my ass. Mm. So anyone listening to this, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think they made three million between the five of them wow. off of this album, which was more than all the other six albums combined. That's very good. And I now, think they deserve it. That could be completely out of my ass. But let's pretend that it's not. Let's pretend. Yeah, let's just sit with that let's just sit potentially with that. false information. It's definitely not false because we need, we're we podcast guys and we never lie. Yeah, you know, people in podcasts don't lie. Never. No, never. Because if it's entertaining, it's true. Yeah. That's what exactly. they like to tell us. That's what I always say. Yeah. Oh, that's. What are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about In Rainbows here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the what I did? Oh. Yeah. Alan again changed the vinyls to, to represent what we're looking at. He yeah. has like 87 vinyls over there. 
and all of them are in rainbows. All of them are in rainbows, and one king of limbs is looking at me on top of a bongo set. <laughs> so this is going to be an interesting breakdown. They wouldn't want it any other way. I think that the next three albums, since we brought up the king of limbs, the next three albums are in rainbows, the king of limbs, and uh, Moonshade Pool. Yeah, I think these three albums is the best three album of run, run of Radiohead of your entire career. Would be inclined to agree with you. But the Benz OK Computer and Kid A is a very close, close, close. Mm. I know you like the Benz, but I don't think it's like... You think... It's like, like it's good, but I think... You think from In Rainbows, The King of Limbs, and Moonshine Pool, In Rainbows would be the Benz for you. So mm. In Rainbows, therefore, takes the cake in that kind of... Definitely. If, like, okay. if the Benz was a tiny bit better, it would compete. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But, but I think these three are just... Because OK Computer and uh, Kid A are obviously so goaded. But mm. we're not talking about that now. We're talking about in rainbows, right. and I, well, the reason why we haven't got so in depth yet is because myself and Alan could do like a whole hour and a half long podcast about mm-hmm. this album by itself. Because this for me was the album that got me into Radiohead. Up until this point, I've been kind of like, okay, let's be nice to the Radiohead <laughs> fans. Okay, Kid A is a masterpiece. We all know that. Pablo Honey. Okay, it's a. This is when Radiohead invented music. Okay, <laughs> so. When they invented the number 15 and made a song called 15 Step. Genius. It was genius. Absolutely. I didn't know what came between 14 and 16 before. <laughs> so they really opened my eyes in this sense that pretty much every song in here, it's a 10 album, uh, 10 song album. There's a one song in here that I want to touch on specifically. That's probably my favorite Radiohead song. And it comes off this album. Now, before it was 15 Step because that was my... So, song that kind of got me into the band when I first did you heard. ever see them do that at the Grammys no I didn't actually it's brilliant I think yeah. it's just Tom York and Johnny Greenwood but like they have a marching band with them mm. I'm definitely going to check that go, out because that, the beat yeah. is really good and I love when the guitar comes in and the bass especially the bass mm. like you're saying this is when the, like the bass really took center stage in like the album yeah. context so 15 Step one of the greatest songs I've ever heard but the best song, in my opinion, that Radio have, have ever done, which is divisive. You can argue so many different songs. But for me... I feel like a lot of people would agree with you there. Yeah, but for me, my favorite song off this album and my favorite Radiohead song ever is Nude. Like, yeah. That song, when I first heard it, it kind of like... Now, it's going to be kind of cringe, but it did bring me to tears, you know? It, it was. Would. Yeah. Anytime I'm like in a mindset... Like, say if I'm sad and I'm listening to my Spotify and a shuffle and Nude comes on, like... I'm about to be in tears. Like, I'm going to need a pint of ice cream beside me. I'm going to need some tissues, man. Like, because, like, <laughs> don't get any big ideas. It's never going to happen. Like, why do you keep <laughs> telling me that, bro? Like, I'm already um, depressed. I distinctly remember showing um, Dempsey, who's the bassist in my band, Woody. I remember showing him Radiohead. And I remember showing him that song specifically. And we were sitting in here. And we had, like, these light-up um, speakers oh, yeah. that he had. And I, I showed him that. And, like, they were the lights were responding to the bass and all that mm. and we had a full volume in here with the lights off and he was just like afterward he was just sitting on the floor like oh my god what was that song it's possibly one of the greatest songs ever written in my opinion yeah, no, it's, it's uh, I, I, would you call it a ballad I don't know cause it know. there's a lot of different um, versions of this song yeah. took them a while to make I think they originally made it when they were making OK Computer yeah I heard that and mm. the other versions you can hear there's a great song in there but they just haven't kind of honed it yet because for example the way they did it here on uh, in Rainbows especially when uh, the intro is over after all the kind of swelling reverse sounds when it just goes to the drums by itself mm. without even the bass the fact that there's just a that's all that's in it but the headphones, it sounds huge. Like, it sounds yeah. like you're in a big, huge st- stadium and it's just you and the drum kit. And in any other context, that wouldn't necessarily work. Like, if it's just those s- s- simple, like, arrangement at first. like, And it eventually turns into something growing, growing, growing. So huge to a great, like, outro. That's amazing. It's in terms of, of music songs production ever. as well, you kind of touched yeah. on that there. In terms of music production, this is by far their best album like definitely like the only thing that kind of comes close to it is Kid A yeah but it's like but that's kind of a sound that's album like, anyway. that's a soundscape album yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a know? soundscape or album or not analog the opposite <laughs> yeah yeah but that's a soundscape album this one here is pure out and out like a rock album with gu- it's guitar mm. music It's they're gone back to guitar music but in full swing like I was saying about the last two albums Amnesiac and uh, Hail to the Teeth I really like those albums but this here in Rainbows 
is what I feel like those last two albums were really, really trying to get. And I just think they perfected it on this album. Because apart from Nude, like I know we've touched on that for a, a, a bit there. Like obviously one of the greatest songs they've ever done without question. You know, they have so many other great songs in here that start off minimal and progress into this huge thing that is swirling around you. For example, Jigsaw falling into place. Mm, that starts song. off with just a s simple like guitar and a drum again guitar, like, and yeah. by the end of it it's like it's swirling around your head and everything's mm -hmm. like picking up as it goes and goes and goes like the outro is like chicks are falling into play yeah. that like every that's, time that comes um, on you have to sing it out loud like yeah. it's crazy that's like, like um a very close contender for my purple pick in that like it's one of the first songs i'll show people oh yeah to radiohead but 100%. off of this album since i can only pick one i picked reckoner yeah mm -hmm. reckoner is awesome but my favorite song of this album is my all-time favorite song i even wrote here me and the lads in my band once did um, a playlist of our 100 favorite songs yeah. from 100 down to one. And my number one pick in it, and it has been number one for ages, is All I Need yeah. by Radiohead. Would that be your favorite Radiohead song as well? Oh, easy. Yeah. Favorite song ever. Favorite song ever. Easy. Mm. I can't blame you though. Like I said, every song on this album is like perfection. Yeah, I could literally like just sit here and talk about every single And it just song. is the cherry on top when they said that th when they released it for free and basically <laughs> like invented a whole new way. Like it basically was a, a, a middle finger up to like the labels of like, like This was 2007. Yeah, they were putting out consistently high quality music forever and then they suddenly come out with one of the best albums they ever made and said, "Oh, by the way, you can have it for free." You'd never really see that now because you everything's on Spotify and streamed anyway. But that was at a time where the record labels had a chokehold over the music industry. You could not be heard unless you had a label. Mm. So, yeah, personally... And the legend of this album has, even now to this day, like, yeah. as I said earlier, mm. I don't know if we were recording when I said that, mm. but like, this is nearly everyone's favourite Radiohead album. It is my favourite Radiohead uh, really? album, and it got me into them. So exactly. there obviously is a nostalgia there, but come on now, you can't really blame that. Like, mm. OK Computer and Kid A, I love to death and the bands but when it comes to just like 10 songs right there's no filler whatsoever everything has its purpose you know jigsaw on the place you know so <laughs> everything has its purpose and the artwork's really cool uh there's so many different like experimental sounds there's different time signatures i know it's so such a fucking high bar have a different time signature it's going to be experimental but they did it tastefully step as well yeah they did like, you don't even notice that's that the that intro that's song four. you yeah. don't notice that like Mental. That 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 takes a lot of talent to yeah. make a song in such an odd time signature mm -hmm. and make you not really realize it's and not really time signature. mind because the general mm -hmm. audiences usually don't enjoy time signature yeah, shifts they because dance to some, but you, can you get can't dance to, to it. Fifteen step. Yeah, I also want to shout out the song um, "Weird Fishes." Yeah, I like that. That's a great song. I really like Faustarp. Faustarp is a great one. Yeah, yeah. that's oh, in a weird time signature. Yeah, as there's well, just like so many good songs like Body Snatchers as well. It just goes hard like. The drums on Body Snatchers is great, you know, like, mm. especially the high, like the ride cymbal. Love that. So, yeah, really into it. I think this is an album where pretty much every idea they were trying to achieve before, apart from Kid A and, like, OK Computer, just came together. Mm. Like, this is their best, in my opinion, rock album. Like, just pure rock songs, like, you know, with riffs. And it's a okay. perfect album, in my opinion. It's my favorite Radiohead album, and I'm going to give it a 10. Yeah, I can't fault it. Yeah. I can't fault it either. I yeah. give it 100%. Every song well. is great. Yeah. You know, Even I, like I gave Kid A 100% and yeah. I could still kind of pick out I wish you did this with it or yeah. I wish you did oh, that. Oh 100%. In this Rainbows, one I can't. There's nothing, there's nothing to pick out. It's no. a perfect album. They, yeah. The concepts that they were trying to go for they're just right people, right place, right time mm. and something that you can never replicate again. Mm. You know? So Alan at the moment his head is steaming. That's what that background sound is because the next <laughs> album here he has a lot of opinions about. Yeah. So next up is uh, the King of Lins. Mm. Alan has a lot. People of don't well. like this album. And why is that? I've seen. I don't know. I, I can't understand it because yeah. this is like we just went on a mad rant about how good In Rainbows is, yeah. and I've mentioned how like Kid A is my favorite album of all time. Yeah. I would nearly say King of Lins is my fa second favorite album mm. of all time. I fucking love this. And I think as well since it's only eight songs, it's very short. Yeah. N yeah, but there's no room to like mess around. I think. To make this album, they actually used loops. Yeah. Whereas, like in every album before this, they like just did the standard way where you record the drums, yeah. record the bass, you, like just in the one take. Yeah. You know, King like they looped certain they, like, sections. You, you can even hear like they yeah. realized after they made the album that to do it live, you'll need two drummers. Oh yeah. yeah. And you can see a lot of like videos of them doing this with two drummers. Mm -hmm. There's a whole live at the basement of 
King of Lilies. Yeah. And they have two drums in it. And also, when we're on Live at the Basement, they did a really good version of Live at the Basement for In Rainbows. Yeah. Which oh, yeah. people should definitely watch. Yeah. So tell me as well, why is King of Limbs, in your opinion, like your second favorite radio album? There's just nothing I can really think of that sounds like it. And I love that. It's hard to get bored of something that you like that is nearly not. Uh, you can't replicate you, it. Yeah, you can't replicate it. Yeah. You know? It's its own thing in its own space. Mm. And if you're feeling like the King of Limbs, that's like, there's only one thing you can listen to to, to get that kind of same experience. And I like what you said before about like from In Rainbows to The King of Limbs and then A Moonshade Pool. That's like a pretty amazing tree album run. Mm. Like considering as well, that's so far into their career and they've already released potentially some of the greatest albums of all time in Kid A and uh, OK Computer. The fact that they can come out now and do In Rainbows, The King of Limbs and A Moonshade Pool, which is also a great album. Like that's a, a testament to how, the high quality uh, musicianship. So... A lot of the people might go, oh, the King of Limbs, this and the whatever. But at the same time, if you took that out by itself and listened to it as an album, it's a great album with so much experiment, experimenting and it's like, there's no real like single kind of potential. They didn't really make this for like a radio. After the huge success of their last album, they took a few year break and they come back and it's like, here's a crazy weird experimental thing again. Yeah. So the fans are going to be like, okay, thanks, buddy. But uh, yeah, for some reason, like, they didn't respond as well this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, like people really don't like this album. Like yeah. I've seen so many videos criticizing this album. And like I even saw a video lately from a YouTuber that I really like his stuff. Yeah. And he was saying, this is by far Radiohead's worst album. I don't agree. Yeah, I like... I definitely... I, can't, like, I think there's two main reasons why people don't like it. Yeah. First one is, it came out after In Rainbows. Like In Rainbows was such a high point and it was like a similar kind of... It's, it was a really accessible album. Yeah. You know? And it's almost like their and magnum not in a bad opus. Way, apart like from the Kid A and stuff, it's like their magnum opus, especially mm. so far into their career. Like, a lot of people, like, general pop audiences would have liked that album as well, you yeah. know? So but I think you're right about that. Another reason why people don't like it is, in my opinion, is because, you know, most albums, you kind of, like, you start listening to it and you hear the singles first. Yeah. And then the songs that the band likes. Yeah. And then the weirder songs. And then by the end of the album, it's just mad shit. Yeah, you mad know? shit, yeah. You hear a lot of that stuff. In um, nearly any album you listen to, yeah, King of Limbs completely flips that. Yeah, so like the first maybe four album songs on the album, I think, is it four, uh, are yes. like really weird sounding, where they're really like messing with what they can do yeah. as a band, and then like the latter half of the album is like the more accessible stuff. Yeah, you know, so I uh, kind of there's already a barrier to entry if you're not into experimental music. By the time you get to the second song, you're already like, what the hell is going on? So the third and fourth song's not going to do it for you. Mm. So I can understand maybe since In Rainbows had such accessible music on it and obviously some of their best songs ever on there. And then you come out with something that doesn't necessarily have single potential because, like like I said, we rate these usually like on a from start to finish kind of thing. So I agree with you. The first four songs, like four or five songs really, up until like Lotus Flower, the Lotus kind of Flower is probably the most successful song. Yeah, album, exactly. That's when it kind of takes us a switch. And then, like, Lotus Flower, it's a really cool song. But I like the first few. Like, it's such a weird... Maybe they don't like it as much because it's half and half, literally. Like, mm. if maybe they did a full eight songs of the first four uh, kind of style, it could be its own thing. Or if they did a whole eight-song uh, uh, eight album of the last four kind of style, people would have enjoyed it a bit more. But maybe it's... Um, it could be the the playthrough, like you know, from start to finish. Mm. I can understand why the first few, if you're really enjoying that, and then suddenly it goes a bit more accessible, it might take you out of it, even if the songs are mm. high quality. So, it's not my favorite Radiohead album, but it definitely is not my least favorite because uh, I'm really enjoying it. Anytime you feel like it might stagnate, there's this different switch up, even halfway through the album where it gets a bit more accessible. So, yeah, definitely enjoying that album a lot, and I think. There's not really anything on it that I don't enjoy as a separate song. So it's going to get a high rating for me. I think I'm going to, for eight songs, I think six of them I really, really like. And only two of them are kind of like, all right, kind of mm -hmm. all right. And the ones that I thought were kind of all right was uh, Lotus Flower. Just because at the time when I was listening to it true, the first four songs were kind of mad. And then that song popped up. So it wasn't that I didn't like it. It just like kind of took me out of it for a second. So it's I, but it's really a good song. I like it. It just took me out because I liked the soundscape of the first few. 
and they were playing a bit too safe. They're playing a little too safe. Yeah, yeah. It's just instead of especially when you start with Bloom. Yeah, exactly. Like for anyone <laughs> listening to this, like after this podcast, yeah, listen to Bloom. It's, it's cr- probably the weirdest song they have on any yeah album. And we were just talking about Kid A a while ago, and that's a yeah. weird album. So it's a weird one. Man. So this is a very strange album. It's its own little vibe. I feel like in time. In a few years, this will be looked at a bit higher regarded. Definitely. I don't know. It's definitely very high rated for me. it ends on a really high note as well. I yeah. want to just Separator. specify that. Separator and give up is, the ghost. Give, yeah. All those last four songs yeah, yeah, yeah. are amazing. But yeah. Separator is like, uh, that's my purple pick of the album. Oh, really? If I was to show someone a song yeah. of this album, I'd show them Separator. Cool. So what's your rating on this album, do you think? Like, eight, I don't know. I'm eight tr- songs. Yeah, I'm trying to not be as generous. You don't want to be I like... I love everything. Even yeah. Feral, which is like another ambient track. Yeah. I still love that. And where it's placed in the album. So, yeah. I gave it 100%. 100%? Yeah. Yeah. Too generous, maybe? No. If you really enjoy it. But then again, is it on the same, same level for you as like Kid A or In Rainbows? I think so. Yeah? I think those well, three albums all right. in, my, in my head, they go together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all right then. I, I, I'm not mad at your... Um, your calculation thank you for respecting my yeah, calculation and mine like I said there's only one part where it took me out it was just when they switched up but I didn't mind it mm-hmm. so actually I'm not even going to say two songs I because actually apart from that yeah I like Codex I like Give Up the Ghost I like Separator I like Feral it's just Lotus Flare when it first came on in a full album experience I was like oh we're going a different way now so I'd say that's the only song that I gave like a half point or whatever you want to call it like really? a, yeah so it's pretty much like a super so, high rating then you're giving everything full marks until Lotus Flower. Yeah. yeah. That's only okay. Um, But I do like the song, though. Oh. I'm talking about full album experience, so that's tough yeah. for me. We'll give it an all right. Yeah. yeah. That's tough for can't me. Can't fault it as a song. No, I can't. Yeah. So I just did it on the calculator there. That's 94%. I'm not mad at that rating at mm-hmm. all because, like I said, it's only 37 minutes. The music is high quality. By the time you think you're even going to go get taken out of the music it's done so you can't really fault it for being a nice bite sized chunk you know <laughs> you're gonna get mad that your 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 uh your mcchicken only took five minutes to to cook <laughs> come on man it's over already stop giving out about it okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's mine and yours so is like a high rating as 100%, well 100 yeah. percent. perfect so in total that's 97 percent. 97 percent. i'm not so, mad at so that far that's what's that that's some very high rated albums. It's the fourth highest rated so far. Oh, very good. So at the moment, it's only behind in Rainbows, Kid A, and OK Computer, mm. which is like, you know, good understandable. Company. Good company. Very good company. Yeah. I wouldn't be uh, kicking them out of bed so on a cold Sunday morning. <laughs> um, so to all those YouTubers giving out about King of Limbs, back off. Now, here's my thing I think artists should end at certain points, especially if you've done enough in your career and your discography that you don't really need to prove yourself anymore. And I think by this point, even after King of Limbs, they could even stop that in Rainbows and people would be like, one of the best bands ever. But I think a Moonshade Pool, if this is their last album, because I don't think they've ever actually publicly said it's their last album or anything. It's just, it's been a few years now. It's like I a feel l- like if a band was to end, yeah, the best way to do it is just, like the police, just stop. Just, just say nothing. Don't say anything, just stop. Don't say that we ended. Yeah. Just say nothing. I think the police did that. I could be wrong. Yeah, no, they did do that. So then like yeah. 20 years later when they want to do a reunion, it's like, Oh, yeah, it's a reunion, but we didn't break up. It's just uh, yeah. we were on hiatus or whatever. That's it, yeah. I think Radiohead would be the type of band to do that. They just put out the last album and just never say that's the last album. Yeah. It's just the last album between them. And they might not even know that. Yeah. They're the kind of band where they might just go, here, Johnny, get down to the <laughs> studio. I'm feeling real creepy today. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm feeling like a kid, eh? You know? <laughs> Gosh, fucking stupid shit. Oh. Oh, I'm not going to lie yeah, That one hurt. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah, no, it hurt a little bit to say it, but um, yeah, I think every artist when they've kind of proven themselves, and they've done enough in their discography, you don't need like go off and do solo projects. Then this is not for me to say. I'm not some rich famous guy who can keep doing music they want for that project because they will keep pumping in money. I just think when it comes to your legacy, after a certain point, you need to stop or else you're you're gonna water it down. And I think this is the perfect album to end on, because it kind of touches on everything you've liked so far from Radiohead up to this point Alan is the big Radiohead fan he would have seen all that kind of stuff I'm just listening to the radio, like the albums some of their big singles and stuff and then only recently kind of going through every single album fully true and I have to say like even though Radiohead get memed on a lot 
as being like a depression band or whatever. It's a high compliment though, getting memed on. If they get memed on so much because they're also loved so much, you know? That's it. So, um, yeah, I wanted to say to Alan, like, I appreciate that he told me to go listen to this band for this kind of series. And it opened my eyes a bit towards, uh, you know, I, I, I do listen to a lot of music, but Alan listens to a lot, a lot of music. Mm. You know, he listens to an album. He's like, what's that artist's name? Okay, I'll just put on the whole album. I got an hour and a half to spare. <laughs> I can't do that sometimes. I need, I need to, to listen to it. I album. have to mentally commit to it, you know. Mm. So when I said, fine, I'm going to sit down and listen to this band, like... I, I don't regret it at all. Even the low moments, like I said, on like Amnesiac, which is my least favorite. Even that, I still enjoyed it. Like, you know, there was no album so far in their whole discography where I was like, that could be without. Get rid of that album and the discog- discography is great. Even Pablo Honey, I think, deserves its place. Stop the creep hate. <laughs> I'm going to start making badges and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but t-shirts. Like, uh, yeah, t-shirts. So, Okay, that's my me talking about the context of a moonshade pool, and now I want Alan to actually talk about the album because he has some opinions about this album too. You know, it reminds me a lot of Kid A. Yeah, remember how when we were talking about Kid A, I said the uh, tonality and the textures Absolutely. and all that. That's the same with this album. Yeah. You're hearing like a like a really just pleasant, nice texture the whole way through. Definitely, the album. definitely. However long it is, do you have how long it is there? Um, fifty two minutes. Fifty two minutes with like, eleven songs. It's so fifty two minutes. Yeah, with 11 songs. So that means there's some long songs on there, you know? No, I didn't realize it was 20 or 52 minutes. Yeah. That says a lot about that. Like, when I listen to this album, this is like Kid A in the sense yeah. that when like I listen to it, I listen to the whole thing. And Kid A is only like 40 minutes. Less, yeah. I'd say, you know? I never noticed it was yeah. nearly an hour long. Nearly an hour. So that's the that's testament to the high quality of the music. Jeez. Because generally, you know yourself, if an album's okay and have like a couple great songs, by the time you're even at the 30 minute mark, you're nearly ready to turn it off. Mm. You know, so the fact that you can get you like 50 minutes and sometimes the Radiohead albums, it leaves you wanting more. So that's a testament to them, you know. And like I said, I wasn't even coming in here to be a big Radiohead fan because I'm not necessarily been a fan for years. Like I know them. Maybe I'm a fan for like the last five years, I suppose. Maybe you're like a fan like 10 plus years. Mm. So you have a lot more time to actually sit with the music and like n- I'm pretty sure you've been able to go through every lyric, every nitpick you want. Whereas I'm still kind of discovering stuff. So, yeah, tell me about this album because I'm really enjoying it. And I, from a perspective of a fan who's been a fan for years and years and years, when this album came out to now, how do you still feel about this album? This was the only album that actually came out while I was a Radiohead fan. Oh, yeah. So like, I became a Radiohead fan maybe like 20, I don't know, 13, 14. And King of Lames came out in 2011. 11, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I remember when I heard about this album coming out, I was like already anxious. I was like, yeah, oh, I gotta no, get it's going to be bad. Oh, right. I was expecting to be bad because I knew the other eight albums were fucking nearly perfect. And most bands. You know? As soon as you become a fan and they put out an album, you're like, why is it going to be the worst dipping, one? You know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I was nervous first and I listened to it. And you know, sometimes when you hear an album, like a new album by an artist, you're like, you mightn't like it immediately. Yeah. You, like it has to sit with you for a while. You have to grow in you. That wasn't the case with this album. Like I heard it and like song for song, I loved yeah. it. Like there's not. I don't think there's any song on this album that I went. Nah, I don't like that. Yeah. You know. Exactly. I had no disdain for any song on the album. I remember when this ca- came out, but I wasn't really on Radiohead then. Like I was like 17 or something when this came out in 2016. I was 17 or 18, right? So I was uh, not really a fan of them. I knew Creep, obviously. I knew Karma Police. I knew those kind of songs, the big ones, you know, Exit uh, exit Music. The kind of huge songs that they have, like, with 500 million, 600 million plays. I didn't know anything about the National Anthem or anything like this kind of stuff. So when I was like, what's this all about, uh, Radiohead? Who are these boys, you know? I've heard of, <laughs> heard of them before, you know? I remember seeing on, like, on YouTube, Burn the Witch. Um, and there's a couple other songs that I can't think of at the moment. I'll look in a sec. But especially Burn the Witch. That came out when I was listening to it. I really liked it. Has a, has a cool video like the animation I remember distinctly you texted me yeah. about that song back oh, yeah. when we were in the course together, yeah yeah I remember you um, you were texting me like ranting about Burn the Witch oh yeah I was like my guy it's like you don't he, even know <laughs> he, he about to learn he about to find out and I did <laughs> and it took me a few years I still really? f- I'm still figuring stuff out from Radiohead they're a great band like that you know there's so many artists that we're gonna have to try find other artists to have a decent decently long discography with a lot of you know yeah, they, they, I like to have a divisive 
artists, especially Radiohead, because a lot of people hate them, you know. But I'm also like in the opinion of if you hate them, you're just wrong. I don't care about <laughs> your, I don't care about your opinion. I'm only messing. All the Radiohead fans just like you, you, you sold yourself to them there. Exactly. Like, I love this guy. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the Radiohead's biggest haters are their fans. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. nobody hates Radiohead more than their fans, <laughs> and that's why I respect it because I can get on the hate wagon as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love hating, bro. It's it keeps me going. You're an absolute hater. Yeah, I love being a hater, but like, um, uh, but they don't give me a lot of reasons to hate on them. You know, there's a really good run in this album that is like, it's not really talked about that much. These three songs, but yeah. I fucking love these three mm-hmm. songs. It's in the middle of the album. There's full stop, glass eyes, and identicate. Do you think those three together is just like a really it's nice run of music? Brilliant. I just love those three songs. Identicate is probably my favorite album or song on the album. I keep saying album yeah. when I mean song I know we're not necessarily <laughs> talking directly about this album we're talking more about the context around it because of how high quality their music was up until this point but I do agree with you I think Radiohead are one of the best to, like playlist in their songs mm. from like a perspective of what's going to flow great into each other and they have been doing this since like the bends you know they've been really great at picking which song needs to go where and I think Moonshade Pool is one of the best examples of that but um for me, this album is definitely one of the most enjoyable from an album listening perspective. Mm. And it has really nice singles too, like Burn the Witch, I think is one of my favorite songs by them. And it's kind of an underrated track because it's newer. Yeah. You know, in it doesn't 10 years. really get talked about that much when yeah. people are talking about radio. Right. Much. But if they had another album after this, everyone would be like, Burn the Witch is such a great track. You know? Song, yeah. <laughs> a lot another of recency one is, bias. That's great is um, Dex Dark. Dex Dark, yeah. That's a great tune. And my purple pick was uh, Present Tense. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. really present tense. Yeah, that's kind of a slept on song as well. Yeah, it's a lot of slept, slept on songs on this album. I think it's because, as well, like I said, a lot of Radiohead fans just universally accepted. All right, this is a really great album, mm. but it it's because really it, much it's, like in, it's in like you said, in great company with you know Kid A, OK Computer, fucking The Bends, Hail to the Thief, King of Limbs. In Rainbows, like I almost missed In Rainbows there. Like that's how many great albums they have that you can miss one. That's considered some of the greatest albums ever. So I feel like this one, when this came out, it was just like, yeah, it was a high, another high quality album. So it's hard to really say anything about it because fans are just like, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> how many bands can you think of that are 25 years into their career and releasing albums this good? And people would say, oh, that's my favorite album by them. Yeah. You know, yeah, most, yeah. most albums, most bands, their first few three or four albums is their best ones mm. and after that it's just and then they sink off. just yeah exactly you know? there's a few albums and bands I can name off that do that yeah. you know for example uh, there's a lot I'm not gonna go for it because yeah, be here all day because I'm just gonna get other fans mad like I already pissed off a few Radiohead fans today <laughs> I don't need to start pissing off Arctic Monkeys fans and stuff you know <laughs> what yeah they should have stopped at AM by the way man you're oh Oh, you're hurting me. But this is not about Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> yeah, <we're getting> <laughs> I'm just being a hater again. I love being a hater because oh. the stuff I really like, I'm going to really get into. For example, if we do like a Green Day one, there's going to get so many haters on that. But I'm going to be like, fuck you, it's their best album. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah. It'll be like, I don't care if all 15 of those albums sound the same. It's really good. I <laughs> don't. I remember I did the Green oh, Day top 10. Oh, and I didn't yeah. like Green Day at first. Oh, yeah. But I actually got into them a lot yeah. as I was doing top 10. We'll get into that as well. Oh man, I want to talk about Green Day now. But that, that okay, we actually should before we finish and get onto what the next artists we're going to talk about should be. Let's go and give our final verdicts on a Moonshade Pool because, like I said, it's hard to talk about this album specifically just because it's so high quality mm. and with such great company. It's the same. There's so many albums in here. Like, you just give me the, all the vinyls, and they're all good, yeah. and I'm very happy. Mm. It's, it's so hard to even say some albums are better than the other. It's just because. A lot of it's personal preference when it comes to Radiohead because they're such high quality music. And no album so far, apart from Amnesiac, which I didn't actually get rated that badly at the end. Still 75%. 75%. Like, like I'm saying, like, even my least favorite ones it are was, still it was better. was second lowest ranking, wasn't it? I think. Yeah. Like, that's the thing about Radiohead so that I've discovered. Even on my least favorite Radiohead album, they're still better than some other average rock band. That mm-hmm. My final verdict of a Moonshade Pool is... They have such great quality songs in here with great company. And there's not really any moments in here where it takes me out. And it's a really great, enjoyable album listening experience from start to finish, especially headphone music. This is their most mm-hmm. headphone album, apart from Definitely. Kid A, in my opinion. Definitely. It's all about the textures. Textures, uh, yes, exactly. It's yeah. the soundscapes and nice palettes of 
pleasant sounds from start pleasant. to finish. Pleasantry. So I'm going to give this like a 95% for me. 95? Yeah. I have it here. I gave it 91%. 91% and it's nothing yeah. to scoff at either. Yeah, so that's 93% from us. 93% for a Moonshade yeah. Pool and that kind of like... show. T- tell the people the list that you have. So the yeah, like the have ratings that we've had so far. This is... This is a lot about radio. And I'm, I was surprised. Yeah. I didn't come in here being a fanboy. I just really enjoyed this experience. No, I, yeah, I knew I'd be giving them a lot oh, of good ratings. You've been on uh, them for a while. But I'll be a lot harsher on future bands. Yeah. <laughs> like Oasis or Green Day. You know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> like, there's nine albums here. And we have six albums that are 90% or more. Only three albums in their entire discography we've ranked lower. Lower than 90%. 90%. That and even at that, like that's... Well, we have 88% of yeah. them, so that's almost... So only one just ne- barely cut it close, like. Yeah, the only really bad ones by Radiohead standard is Pablo Honey, which got 71%, and Amnesia got 75%. I'm not even mad at that. So even mm-hmm. their, like, best, or even their the lowest ranking albums got 75%, which is still, like, that's still a passing grade. Yeah. Like, that's like a C plus, at least. Something anyway, I feel my leaving sort. Yeah. That's why that's why I'm doing a podcast. Yeah, now. exactly, you know. That's why we're musicians in this studio right here. That's it. You know? But uh I'd like to think that Radiohead from start to finish, their discography is one of the best discographies of a band I've ever heard. Yeah, we've Most, definitely started. Very on consistent. A high point. Super consistent. Mm-hmm. You know? Even when they're consistently doing stuff I might not necessarily agree with. They're doing it to a high standard that even if there's certain songs or albums that weren't my favorite i'm not um disliking them that much you know there's there just wouldn't be my first one i'd put on but mm-hmm. if i had vinyls or whatever of all the radiohead studio albums each one's getting a listen like there's not going to be any that's going to be like nah skip that one if i'm going through a radiohead discography from start to finish to pablo honey all the way to a moonshade pool it was a really enjoyable experience and like I said, I wasn't coming in here as a fanboy. I, I was aware of their music. I was listening to some of the albums, like In Rainbows especially. But ever since doing the full review kind of thing, they've definitely become one of my uh, most appreciated bands that I maybe overlooked because I knew they were famous and they got a lot of respect. So I just went along. Oh, okay, they're a fairly well-respected band. But when I actually go in and listen to it myself, I can see where a lot of the praise comes from, especially Mm -hmm. starting in 93. And now it's 20, 23. 20 years. So 20 years of high quality, great music. 30 years. 30 years, Jesus. God, that was some bad math. Oh, Jesus. Uh, We just said a few (laughs) minutes ago we're no good at maths, so that's not what we're here for. (laughs) We're not here for the maths, okay? When we start doing math rock, then we'll bring the calculator. (laughs) (laughs) So in your opinion, obviously you were a fan before we started this kind of review process of going through the whole discography. Now, I know this one was a little rough around the edges, but to anyone listening, we're going to be doing a lot more bands as well in the future and artists. We just happened to pick one that happened to have a lot of albums and a lot of high-quality mm-hmm. music, so I don't want it to come across that we were just totally praising everything they did, but we just happened to start with a very high-quality band. So I feel like it was put down to a poll. There's a reason that people vote for Radiohead. Yeah, people you wanted know? to... You know, want to listen to Radiohead, want Radiohead, to, listen to Radiohead and want to discuss Radiohead. And if anyone's listening, like this is on YouTube or Spotify, we have a Instagram page of Volcano Predators as well. You can leave your opinion on this. If you thought I was totally harsh about Amnesiac, then mm-hmm. let me know why, you know. And if you thought my high rating of In Rainbows was totally unjustified, and that's the popular opinion, let, let us know why. So, and since Alan's been listening to Radiohead for years and we started this, you know, did this change your opinion on any of the albums since you've been a fan for a long time now? We were looking at them from a different perspective. I realized how much I like King of Limbs. Yeah. And how much I didn't expect to like it. Mm. You know, um, I realized I, I like Radiohead a lot more now. Yeah. After going through and actually like critically yeah. picking Instead out what I like about each song. Yeah. You no, know, it's like if you're listening to an album, you're just like, that was a good album. Yeah. But you can't really remember half the songs on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You know? you know, whereas like I was actively listening to these yeah. songs, picking out my favorite and right. least favorite parts of it. And like there's only... I think in my notes there's only maybe three songs in yeah. nine albums that I didn't like. That you didn't like? That says a lot, like yeah. You know? But um, yeah, it's a pretty but high. Before standard. we go, I want to say two things though. Yeah. So w- you're on about Moonshade Pool being potentially Radiohead's last album. Yeah. Which it could be. Could be. Which I wouldn't be mad about because we don't did know. You listen though. to the Smile. The Smile, no. The Smile. They released an album last year called A Light for Attracting Attention. Was it a studio album? Studio album by. A new band. It was Tom York, 
yeah. and Johnny Greenwood and then a drummer who mm-hmm. I don't know the name of but he's a very good drummer right but that's why I'm thinking this could actually Amushi Pool could have been Radiohead's last yeah. album because the Smile released an album that was really good but so it could be there like if they're done with Radiohead because they've done everything they need to do that could be the next thing that's five people last in Radiohead one, and, they're doing and two of them went off and made a new band mm. so we'll see Whatever they do, but definitely I, listen to that album. They've definitely, yeah, I definitely will. But they've earned their right to do whatever they want now. So uh, that was Radiohead. That was voted on by the people, and mo- that was Alan's pick. So he had a few picks. Um, it was Radiohead or a couple other bands that didn't even get close on the poll, apart from uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Because we'll do them eventually. We'll do them eventually. They have, they have, they have like big eight million albums, so <laughs> that's gonna take a while. At least ten more. Yeah, so we we'll probably do it. like. 10 albums at a time or even yeah. 5 or whatever and just do them sporadically in between because that's going to take a long time you know we might yeah we'll get to that but um so the next four artists that I'm going to put up for poll that we could potentially go through their discography and do the same thing with so we already did Radiohead um the four artists I would like to pick would be number 1 Green Day number 2 Bob Marley and the Wailers. Number three, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Or number four, uh, The Police. The Police? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because I don't know a lot about The Police. So, so. That again, Bob Marley, The Police, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and, and Green, Green Day. Day. I feel like Red Hot Chili Peppers is going to win it, though. I have a lot of fa- friends who are Red Hot Chili Peppers fans. Yeah. And one who's a fanatic. So that's why I was like, give me, I'll give you two rock bands and two other completely different ska reggae. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I'm gonna stop the podcast right here. Thanks yep. for listening. Thanks people. for listening. Yep, and that's love a you. And that's a radio pod. <laughs>